Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Data Blitz, Data Blitz podcast. Uh, this is the Daily Fantasy episode uh, for week 10. Um, so I think there's a lot of cool games this week. Um, if you haven't tuned in before, what we do for the Daily Fantasy episode is uh, start off with a couple game breakdowns of games I'm excited for. I think there's a lot of potential for um value plays or uh high scoring output and then from there we jump over into value plays and then cover uh some starts and some sits uh of some of the higher budget guys and then we additionally cover a stack or two of the week quarterback wide receiver stack um so we can just jump right into it uh the first game that i have for the game breakdown section is the chargers versus the lions um i'm very excited for this game because of the explosive offenses that we'll be seeing um i think jared goff's gonna put up a lot of points uh jameer gibbs has started to establish himself in detroit jameson williams is back uh maybe he'll get an opportunity to do something this week although that might not be the most likely and then on the other side of the ball, uh, we have you know Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler looks like he's kind of back and, and returning to form. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for high fantasy output. I would not start either of the defenses because um, I think a lot of good players on both offenses there. Um, the other game that I'm excited for this week is is the Falcons versus the Cardinals. Um, So last week we saw Taylor Heineke step in for Desmond Ritter. And this week we should be seeing Kyler Murray come back in for the Cardinals. Um, It's a lot of unknowns for both sides of the ball there. Um, You know, both of these teams are the bottom third of the league in points per game. Uh, Both of them are allowing tons of points per game. And the Falcons are the only team here that is like in the top half of yards per game. I think the Falcons have a better constructed roster. Uh, The Cardinals have a better quarterback. Uh, We'll see how healthy Kyler is this week. He probably won't be running around like normal, um, but he might be able to find Michael Wilson uh, Hollywood Brown and a couple of those other guys um, for some good offense. I would be interested to see if Taylor Heineke uh, targets Drake London, Kyle Pitts, uh, if Bijan gets involved or Algier, uh, what that really looks like. Um, and we can kind of jump over into that in some of the value plays. Um, so for the first value play I have this week, Um, Just a value at quarterback. I have Sam Howell. Uh, Last week we saw the Baltimore Ravens um, tear apart the Seahawks defense. Sam Howell has been um, very consistently uh, a high-scoring quarterback. Um, They're throwing the ball like third most in the league. Um, Sam Howell is... I should really do my stacks earlier because Sam Howell is part of the stack. It's Sam Howell, Terry McLaurin. Uh, they've been great together um, ever since, you know, Sam Howell has really started to establish himself. I think they should be able to have plenty of opportunity for great offense this week um, against the Seahawks. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. My running back value play here is a guy that, I feel like he's priced wrong. Um, it's it's Tyler Algier. Tyler Algier, um, he's, he's, I don't know, he's been like kind of the main red zone guy, the sometimes main running back um, over Bijan. Last week he rushed for 12 yards, 30, or 12 times, 39 yards, a touchdown against the Vikings. Um, he hasn't really had a crazy blow up game. Last week he put up 11. That was his third best game. Week 7, 14. And then in week 1, 24. 
Um, I think we could see something like that week one game this week where both Tyler Algier and Bijan are viable and both of them are going to put up points uh, against the weaker Arizona defense. Um, So I really like Tyler Algier just because he's 4,700 and the Cardinals are a bottom three defense against running backs. So I would look at him right now as a great play. Um, Another guy that I have as a value play, you probably heard me during my um, dynasty breakdown, is Elijah Moore. I'm calling my shot. This is Elijah Moore's breakout week. Um, Similar to like Jameer Gibbs against the Baltimore defense when – they got crushed by Baltimore, which I think could happen again. Um, Elijah Moore should be able to get plenty of targets, catches, yards, you know, maybe a touchdown um, in a situation where Cleveland is getting blown out by Baltimore. I think that might happen this week. Uh, I don't think Deshaun Watson is, you know, fully, fully back. Um, he hasn't been the best still. And I think, Elijah Moore might benefit from that um, in some short yarded situations, just getting some touches. Um, and I'm, I'm expecting like eight, nine targets for him this week. And then jumping over the tight end spot uh, for, I don't know what week in a row this is, but I think the third week in a row, Dalton Kincaid is our value play at tight end. Um, Dalton Kincaid, Averaging 9.9 fantasy points per game. Uh, Denver is the second worst defense against opposing tight ends. Um, I think everything sort of adds up there in in showing that um, Dalton Kincaid should continue to put out great numbers. And I have no hesitations in starting him in almost all my lineups. So I would recommend you do the same. Um, I'll give you a bonus play here. Uh, I think potentially Trey McBride comes in this week and does something. Uh, I I know that that connection with Kyler Murray isn't known, but I think there's going to be more passing volume in general on the Arizona offense. Um, So I think Trey McBride is a beneficiary of that, whether it pans out for him, Hollywood Brown, uh, you know, Michael Wilson. I'm not sure, but there's, he's 3,500. So you're not really risking that much for him. Um, so that's who I like at tight end. And then for defense, I think the value play here is the Colts defense. Um, the Colts going up against New England. Uh, they've been pretty consistently good this year. Uh, last week they put up 26 points against Carolina. So they're coming off a really great week. Um I think Carolina's closer to um, New England's offense than almost any team that they've played so far this year. Maybe the one argument you could make is week two at Houston. Uh, The end of score of the game was 31 to 20. um, And the Colts defense still got nine points. So they've gotten quite a few interceptions uh, a few sacks almost every game um so i and three defensive touchdowns on the year with two of them coming last week uh isn't bad either so i would check them out for uh your value play and then we can jump back over into starts and sits uh per usual i call it starts and sits and then i just don't really come up with any sits because i make lineups. It's not like I'm looking at who I'm not starting. Um, I would say my first start this week is Jared Goff. Um, Jared Goff is a top like five quarterback um, in terms of fantasy points per game, maybe a little bit lower than that, but he's been kind of struggling the past two weeks against Baltimore and Las Vegas who have Pretty good defenses. Uh, Still over 250 passing yards against both of those teams. But I think this is the week where Jared Goff, Amon Ra, uh, 
Jameson Williams and Dal or, uh, Sam Laporta all really connect and uh, Jerry Goff is the main beneficiary of that. So I'm a big fan of him um, this week and I don't really have any hesitation starting him. His price tag is a little bit steeper at 6400 but uh, the Chargers have been the second worst team against um, quarterbacks, so I don't really have any fears. Next guy I have here is Jameer Gibbs. Um, you might have thought that I was going to go value play Dave Montgomery. I think Dave Montgomery might take a little more time to get worked back into the uh, Lions offense. Jameer Gibbs is coming off the two best games of his career. Um, and at Baltimore, when they got kind of blown out, he only had 11 attempts, but was able to um, supplement that with receiving work. I think Jameer Gibbs really does have that defined role now in the Detroit offense. So I really wouldn't have and don't have uh, any hesitations paying 7000 for Jameer Gibbs this week. Um Again, I think this is going to be a high-scoring game, plenty of passing, um, and Jameer Gibbs is kind of the best guy for that situation, definitely better than David Montgomery. Um, and even if it is a low-scoring game, I still think Jameer Gibbs gets plenty of work. Um, one more guy that I have here is Michael Pittman. Um, I think Michael Pittman's a great play this week. Uh, he's been very consistently putting up, you know, 15 to 20 points for the past four weeks in that 6,500 salary range. Um, and he's kind of a touchdown away from having that really great breakout game, um, or at least was last week. Last week he had eight receptions, 64 yards on eight targets. Just feel like um, we really have... Gardner Minshew looking his way the week before that he had 13 targets. So uh, the volumes there, New England's defense isn't great. Um, I think Michael Pittman is a, a good value here this week um, because of that. Uh, additionally, I have Christian Kirk out of the wide receiver spot here. Um, I kind of have Christian Kirk and to Elvin Ridley. It's just like San Francisco probably is going to score more points than Jacksonville here. Um, if we run into a situation where Jacksonville is down, uh, I think both these guys are going to get plenty of work. In the situation where they're winning, that might be a little bit different. But in the situation where they're winning, I think one of them has scored a touchdown. Um so I'm a big fan of both of the guys. I think Christian Kirk is a little more so uh, the wide receiver one on this team. Um, so last week he had five targets, four receptions, 46 yards. The week before that, six targets, six receptions, 90 yards, and a touchdown. Um, so he's coming off kind of one of his worst games of the season. I'm interested to see how he bounces back. I think he will. Um and he's priced kind of accordingly down at 6000 so you're getting a you know mid-tier wide receiver two um for 6000 so he's a great flex play if you have uh like a cheap budget elsewhere or just wide receiver three um so that covers wide receiver there um i think a guy that i'm willing to pay up for this week uh, at the tight end position is Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz coming off the best game of his career, probably. I don't know. I didn't actually look. Um, <laughs> he's coming off of the best game his this season. Um, 10 targets, 130 yards, touchdown. Um, on 10 receptions, sorry, on 11 targets. Um, I've kind of said this earlier, uh, you know, I think like week five, week six. Tied to C.J. Stroud. Um, C.J. Stroud's going to continue looking his way. I would start Dalton Schultz as often as I can. He's going for 4,900. 
Um, some of the guys around Dalton Schultz right now are Jake Ferguson, um, and then TJ Hawkinson's one above him. I think Dalton Schultz has been good enough to justify um, being in that range, so I'm comfortable with him. He's right, Taysom Hill's above him, so take that for what you will. Um, and then the defense that we're all probably paying up for this week is the Cowboys defense against the Giants. Uh, they played in week one. The Cowboys defense put up 37 points. Daniel Jones just tore his ACL. Uh, Tyra Taylor might be out this game. I I don't even know why I mentioned the Colts defense. With all those factors going into it, like, start the Cowboys defense, don't look back. Everybody else is going to be doing it, so there's no real positional advantage to not doing it. Uh, they're going for 4,400 right now, and I'm a big fan of that. Um, so I, I did look at a couple guys that I'm not comfortable starting this week. Uh, one of those guys is uh, Justin Fields. I don't know if he's playing tonight, so obviously not comfortable starting Justin Fields when he's going for 7,000. Um, and then just additionally, uh, Dak. When we saw Dak go week one against the Giants, it felt like the defense really carried him. Uh, he ended up with 6.3 points. Um, so I don't know if I would start him. He has had games this year where his defense has carried him. Um, and he's not really put out great numbers those weeks. He is coming off of the best two weeks of his season at 31.4 and 32.1 points. But I'm still a little bit concerned. Um, I, I just wouldn't do it. Um, additionally, I have a guy here at running back. Um, I'm not really interested in starting, um, Alvin Kamara this week. Alvin Kamara's lost work to Jamal Williams the past couple weeks. Uh, it, it just feels like maybe that Alvin Kamara that we saw at the start of the season or, you know, when he got back from his suspension, um, isn't the same guy that we're looking at right now. I don't see a bounce back game happening. Um, he only had 13 touches last game uh, after the 21 the week before. Maybe there was a small injury, but uh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of Alvin Kamara this week, so I would avoid him. Um, and then to go to wide receiver, um, I there's a million guys I'm not a fan of this week. Uh, I'd say Christian Watson. He I'd rather have like Jahan Dotson or Josh Downs or maybe even Tyler Boyd. Uh, Christian Watson just like doesn't really get the volume right now on the Green Bay offense. So I just strongly prefer to not play him uh, until he really establishes himself as that volume guy. From the tight end position, um, aren't really that many guys I don't love this week. Uh, I'd say maybe Jake Ferguson, just for the same reasons as Dak. There might not be a ton of offensive play. It could be a more defensively in game um, with the Cowboys defense really stepping up there. So that's probably what I have for tight end. That is what I have for tight end. Um, so I'd lean away from Jake Ferguson. And wrapping it up uh, at defense, I'm not a huge fan of the Seahawks defense this week. I know that they theoretically are a good play. Uh, Washington's like the second worst um, in the Seahawks. Second worst offense in the Seahawks are, you know, top five, top 10 defense. Uh, in terms of fantasy points per game, but that's really coming off of like one 30 point game against the Giants. Um, and I don't really see them doing much against Washington. Uh, potentially a few sacks on Sam Howell, but uh, he's really stepped up his play. And I'd be interested to see um, 
if they can really stop him or I, I mean I think it's gonna be like an average game for them but they're listed like the number two um, in terms of salary right now so they'll probably put up like five points um, but Sam Howell's been throwing the ball a lot uh, and they've been not that bad on offense so that is what I got for um on my lineups this week and, and all these positions, uh, I did mention that quarterback, wide receiver stack uh, in Sam Howell and Terry McLaurin. I also like Sam Howell and Jahan Dotson. He's been worked in a little bit more in the past couple of weeks, um, and I'm a big fan of that usage that we've seen. Um, but definitely a great week. A lot of good slates. Uh, huge fan of the Chargers Lions game. Really looking forward to that. And then the uncertainties that are coming with the Arizona and Atlanta game are really cool too. So appreciate you for tuning in. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, follow on Twitter, um, and follow wherever you listen to your podcasts. Appreciate you for tuning in.